So how do you handle the constant change? That part is heavily automated. Change is difficult, change is scary, but change is necessary to grow either as a person or a company, and Tesla has figured out the way to make it happen easily. For those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $2,300. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I'm going to be referring to a very small section of a very long interview that Lars did on Best in Tesla with Joe Justice, who is an amazing person, it seems like. I actually hope I can interview him someday because he seems really, really cool. But anyway, I'm just gonna do like a little bit of a three and a half minute-ish clip that I asked Lars and he said I could certainly use it, so that's great, thank you, Lars. But I highly recommend the over one hour interview. There is so much stuff that they touch on that I'm not even gonna get close to today. I'm just gonna focus on one small part. But definitely check out the link in the description and go give that a watch. But before I show this clip, I want to reveal some groundbreaking news that just came over the wire. Elon Musk confirmed over Twitter that very soon all Teslas will have Sonic the Hedgehog games on them. Woohoo, that's the best news I've heard in a long time. <laughs> I know, not the most earth shattering thing in the world, but honestly, my favorite game in the world was Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I love that game. And for all you Gen Zers and everything, there was no memory on Sonic the Hedgehog 2. So you played that game and if you lost or if the power went out or anything happened, you started all all the way back over again. It took me forever to win that game because I had to keep going back to the beginning. I remember turning off the TV and just leaving the console running and just hoping that the power wouldn't go off or something in the meantime. Anyway, that's really fun news. It's obviously not a huge deal, but I just wanted to pass that on because I think it's really cool. And I love the fact, again, speaking of change, that Tesla is just willing to think about things like this, put in really cool games for you while you're charging up your car. Or honestly, if you're just sitting in the garage or something and you're kind of bored, you can, you know, go ahead and play the game. All right, so enough of the important stuff. Let's discuss change and Tesla. Uh, Tesla is more like watching Starship Troopers. It, it's like where, uh, where grit meets science. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so how do you handle the constant change? That part is heavily automated. You, you have these definition of ready and definition of light, uh, definition of done heat maps that are, that are it's basically the autopilot stack. And it's looking with cameras at, I mean, it's vision. Uh, it's looking at cameras of parts that are coming in that are new and making assessments. Are these a good idea? Should we use them? Do they meet the definition of ready? And you can check composition, uh, alloys, you can x-ray parts, you can do awesome pre-failure analysis, all automated before a human hand even gets on the thing. And so by the time this, for example, new airbag chip reaches you, it's gone through such a robust level of automated testing that really by the, by the time it, it touches how can I say it? It depends where you are, right? I mean, if you were the first one, what you're doing is throwing yourself on making automated tests in a team, right? So in that case, you are saying, how do I even test this thing, right? But by the time it gets to the car to actually in a position to trigger an airbag, it's been so absurdly validated. The automated test coverage is absolutely robust. And the robots are so good at taking a different shape and making it work. I mean, that's just physics like that that's not even that hard or weird and the robots have had years and years to be updated and evolved to to handle that pretty well so they're just putting this stuff in and coating it with sealants and adhesives and then water testing it and that kind of thing the radio frequency shield test then the cars put themselves through all road legal compliance tests in factory mode every single one before they're sold so you have 100 percent test coverage again when it's integrated uh the it makes it really safe to change your mind quickly. And that's every single car that goes through this. It's just, it's not just one car and then they make a bunch of cars and do another test. It's every single car goes through this test. Yeah, I, I love how free you are to make change when you know there's gonna be full test on this specific car or this specific rocket or anything. 
And that's the value of not doing phased development. In phased development, you don't want to make a change because tests aren't going to run until a thousand cars from now when the next test phase happens. And even then, if you're between minor model changes, only one car out of, for example, a thousand would be tested. So you mm. don't want to change. You want to freeze change, which does block innovation. But in exchange, you don't have to run tests again. Well, that's a mindset that says testing is expensive. So yeah. let's withhold innovation so we don't have to test. Well, Musk comes from software, I mean, PayPal, right? And writing software even before that, x.com. So software folks say pace of innovation is the only thing that matters. What I need to do is make tests cheap and constant. So testing is as fast as possible and essentially free and never stop running tests ever. Then mm. I can introduce change at any time. That is what software does. Well, there's no reason hardware can't. You just have to develop full automated test coverage, which is huge. That's massive. That's what DevOps in hardware is. Um, and that's what Tesla does and SpaceX and Neuralink and the Boring Company is they do test-driven development with automated test coverage and great DevOps. Then mm. you can make change anytime, anywhere. And if it was a net increase, now the management problem changes, which is where we started. Now the management uh, problem is, did you make a useful change? How quickly and how cheaply are you able to make useful changes? And that's the gamification of the company after you have awesome, robust, automated, fast, cheap test. All right, so obviously there's a lot of stuff to unpack in this clip. I'm gonna start off kind of towards the beginning when Joe Justice talks about the computers defining what is ready and what is done and having a heat map of that. And by the way, if you don't know what a heat map is, a heat map can be done in a lot of different ways. I think a lot of people are familiar with it from gaming. Heat maps are used in games to show, like multiplayer games to show where other players are. And it helps you identify where you might wanna go if you wanna either get into the thick of things or if you wanna stay away from that. Either way, that kind of thing works. This picture is from the Monte Grappa game, and you can see from the map where players are here. So you can either go towards or away from that, depending on what you're interested in. So anyway, it's very interesting stuff. Very, very cool. Heat maps are really interesting. They're utilized a lot, not just in games, but also in scientific inquiries, and clearly Tesla is using them as well. So what would you use a heat map for in the context of Tesla? Well, what you would do is you would look at a screen someplace. It sounds, Joe Justice says there's screens everywhere and on your phone, but you can look at a heat map for problems, right? So there is a problem here and how intense is that heat map? That shows you where you might wanna go that day to work on something. And so probably a bunch of people will collect there and they will start to work on a given problem if it's like intense in the heat map. Joe Justice also talks about the problems being ready to solve and then being done with being solved as well. And that's a really interesting thing because saying something is ready and something is done, identifying a problem, all of those things are complicated Complicated. They're not straightforward things to do with a computer, right? How do you define when something is ready to be solved, when there's a significant problem, and when it's finished? And interestingly, what Joe says is that the first group of people who arrive on scene have to figure out that very thing. They have to figure out the metrics of what defines the problem, what defines the solution, and what defines it being ready to go out the door. So those are all things that the first group of people that arrive on scene have to do. And I assume that's a combination of experts in the area plus software designers, right? So the experts figure out what it is that they need to solve and what the metrics are for solving that problem. And then software people have to encode that, or maybe they made it easy enough that it's just kind of plug and play and you just go like, I need these things solved and the software figures it out on its own. Again, don't have you know internal access to Tesla, and so I'm just taking a speculative guess at this, but it seems like one of those two things would be possible. And given what Tesla does, probably it's as automated as possible. And speaking of teams, teams are a huge part of what makes Tesla so unique. Teams are self-organizing systems that crop up to solve given problems. And if you're interested, you can see my Meta Cyborg episode that I did a couple of weeks ago on this very subject. So all of this is interesting, but then Joe Justice starts to dig into the weeds just a little bit, and he starts talking about things that are kind of mind-blowing. He basically says that materials, design, components, etc., are all being tested automatically all the time. And this is all automated, and that is kind of mind-blowing. 
mind-blowing. And as he notes, validation is done in great detail and for every single part before it's put into the car. And of course, this process is all automated. And this is how Tesla can put new chips and new designs into their cars right away. They're individually validated on a per item basis before they're put in the car. And interestingly enough, it sounds like Tesla robots are flexible. It's not like they can only fit one square peg into a square hole. They can actually change how they work and they can figure things out and they can put new shapes into new spots that they need to go into. So this is really interesting. So not only the humans are flexible, but also the robots are flexible. And then we get into what's the most revealing part in my mind, which is factory mode. And I really wish I could put my car into factory mode just for fun, just to see what it does. But factory mode allows the car to test itself, the whole thing, the entire systems, everything, as it's going down the assembly line before it even goes out the door. So factory mode is perhaps the most impressive thing I've ever heard about Tesla. And just to give a point of reference, almost all products are tested on a statistical basis. So as Joe said, you know, we'll just take a thousand items. It doesn't really matter what that number is. But basically, if you're doing that statistical method, you test one in every 1,000 items. And then you assume if the one in a thousand randomly selected item works correctly, then everything else works correctly. But that's a pretty dangerous game to play. Now, once in a while, you get an individually tested item like my Omega Seamaster here, which is individually depth and time tested, but this is a luxury watch and you pay a great deal for that. On more mass scales like a car or something, individual testing is generally speaking far too expensive and time consuming. Except of course for in Tesla's case, where the car can do all the tests itself in just a few minutes with no real human intervention unless it detects that something is wrong. So again, we've got individual testing at mass consumer scale. This is really unheard of. And this this is why nobody is ever going to catch Tesla without at least redoing what Tesla is doing here from scratch. So before the car is put together, you have individual testing of all the components, and then you have what's called in rocketry, all up testing. You put it all together and you test everything all at once and you make sure that it works before that individual car goes out the door. So the car I'm driving was individually tested before it left Tesla's factory in Fremont. And again, as Joe Justice talks about in the industry in general, hardware industry in general, everybody else freezes change. It's too scary, it's too expensive, and it's too time consuming. And if you only test one out of every 1,000 products or pick a number, then you don't know if this will actually work when you make a change. But if you test every single product, then you do, and that's genius. And of course, to get to that state is absolutely untrivial. <laughs> it takes a massive amount of effort to get to the state where you can do this. But once you do, you make testing as fast and cheap and ubiquitous as possible, and you just keep running the tests all the time. And of course, if you're like me and you're more of a software person, you realize that this is software mentality, right? It's software mentality applied to hardware. It's insanely difficult to create the foundation of all of this, but once you have it, you can freely make changes as you will without having to worry as everything is tested. And again, Again, as my Meta Cyborg episode discusses, and as Joe Justice mentioned again in his interview with Lars, the Tesla vision and full self-driving that we see in our cars is just a side effect of the vision slash AI system that Tesla has implemented in their factories. Before these interviews, I didn't realize that Tesla factories are actually using vision itself, as well as many other inputs like x-rays and things like that, to determine the need and also the doneness of any particular challenge that's going on at the moment. And all of this requires an amazing amount of vision work in order to see and understand the world. It's not a trivial task at all, and people have spent decades working on this. So Tesla, again, standing on the shoulders of giants, but they are giants in their own right. They're creating something that it really, I don't think, has ever been done before, at least at scale. So think of this. The robots are watching and understanding the world around them. It's a narrow world because it's just a factory world, but it is a human, messy, chaotic world with a lot of stuff going on. And they can then determine immediately if things are going well or poorly, and they can get give immediate feedback on this, and they never sleep, and this allows for teams and self-organizing systems to evolve, just like life, by the way. And again, the reason I called my last video on this topic, Tesla is a meta cyborg, is because just like life, it's partially made out of machine parts and partially made out of human parts. It just happens to be a corporation instead of an individual. Now, of course, there's a little bit scary overtones with this. You start thinking about 1984 and Big Brother watching everybody. But as long as this is being used in a positive manner, it allows for so much more autonomy and empowerment for users and so much more speed of development. And as Joe 
Joe Justice talked about near the end of the clip here. What we have here is a company that is structured like a game. Tesla is structured like a game. You have levels, you have goals, you have tools, you have money, spending less is good. You have the power to make whatever changes you like to the environment, and you have a score, right? Good, bad, indifferent changes. And all of this is made possible via the insanely ambitious foundations of making hardware like software by having intelligent machines that can see the world, judge the world, and give instant feedback about it. It's just mind-blowing. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting and a little bit mind-blowing. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. Again, YouTube's algorithm works that way. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. And by the way, I really, as I said in the parachute episode, which I just released, and if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's really interesting. It's about the physics of parachuting. In that video, I was able to try something different and spend quite a bit of money on it because I have support from my Patreon patrons. So thank you all so much. And of course, if you want to join, definitely check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in some awesome merch, check out the link in the description. We've got the Tesla Bot t-shirt, which is super popular these days. Don't mess with Tesla. Lots of other t-shirts, tumblers, mugs, etc. So check out the link in the description and help the channel out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200 and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $2,300. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, remember we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how clicking on a link and going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. And as always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.